All right, guys, hopefully you can hear me over this mask. Uh, yeah, the mask is kind of silly looking, makes me look like a duck, but it's the only one my work uh, has right now, so uh, beggars can't be choosers. So anyhow, what I thought I would do today is I am actually going to take you guys with me on a walk through Shanghai to show you that life has gotten back to normal 80%, 75, 80%. And I'm doing this because there's a lot of countries out there right now who are not in this situation. And it's looking very bleak, especially for places like the United States, Italy, Spain, France, and some others. So really what I wanted to do today is just get out on the town here in Shanghai and show you guys that it is absolutely capable of coming back from something like this if you practice the quarantine behavior. So, um, you know, we were locked down for two full weeks and then, you know, probably most people started uh, self-quarantining probably two weeks before that. And then it's only, you know, the, the, the traffic in the city has kind of only trickled back since then. So it's probably been a good six weeks, two months of practicing social distancing. Uh, and it has been the only reason why China has been able to rebound so quickly and get back to normal. So today's walk through town is really just to give you guys some hope and show you what is uh, possible if we all just work together. weeks ago this place was a total ghost town this street was completely empty uh, so yeah we're all still wearing masks and being careful but as you can see people have gotten back to their normal routines for the most part today's Saturday morning so a lot of people are still probably sleeping in it's still somewhat early um, it's not even noon yet so uh, it's a good time for me to get out though so I'm gonna I'm gonna put some miles between my house and uh, where I want to get to the destination. So you guys can kind of see just a cross section of life here in Shanghai to see how fast we can actually get back to mostly normal. Like I said, it's about 70, 80% normal. Uh, considering where China was a month ago, this is a huge victory. So anyhow, hopefully this guy, this gives you guys some hope. Just a few weeks ago when I would come home from work or if I had to walk to the grocery store, this street, this sidewalk was just empty. There might've been a police officer or two, maybe a few delivery guys, because we were still doing some deliveries, even when we were shut down, food at some restaurants, very few, but some restaurants were still offering a uh, delivery of some sort. But to see the streets just teeming with life again and families out, kids out with their parents and grandparents, it just makes you feel more confident uh, that things are gonna get back to normal soon. Now, we could all be wrong. My biggest fear right now, to be honest with you, is a secondary wave of infections from people coming back into China now. And the good news is, is that China is taking that super seriously. So from what I've heard this week, China will start routing all flights into Shanghai from international countries. Now, the reason they're gonna do that is because Shanghai has a super sophisticated screening process already in place at the airports. So what they'll do any international flight will come into Shanghai to land. They'll get the people off the plane. They give every single person a coronavirus test, okay? Every single person that lands gets tested, coming into China now. And then, based on you know, positive or negative, you either get sent straight to the hospital, or if you're negative, 
then you get quarantine either at home based on the country that you came from or you get quarantine in a government facility if you come from one of the high risk countries like the US, Italy, France, Spain, Korea and some others. So it's an amazing process and something that the United States is, and some of these other countries are going to have to figure out once their infections peak and they get back to kind of normal, it's all going to happen again if they don't have a screening process in place at the airport. So uh, anyhow, let me show you guys here. This is a busy street. Uh, I live in a neighborhood called Shujahwe, and it's a pretty uh, major thoroughfare here. And you can see the cars are coming back here on the street. It may not look like a lot, but two to three weeks ago, this street was absolutely empty of cars and scooters. This bridge that I would cross, absolutely empty of people. So while it's still not back to peak traffic, this is such an encouraging sign. It, it, like I said earlier, when I was walking, it makes me a little nervous just because I don't want us to get too overconfident, but Everybody I see is still wearing a mask. Uh, people are not grouping up, which is nice. They're still spreading out, which is good. And the streets aren't packed. I mean, this, you know, again, this is usually gridlock, guys. This is usually just packed with cars and it's still pretty sparse. So this is a good sign that we can beat this thing quickly, get it contained quickly if we all just listen, stay inside and hunker down. Even though I was nowhere near the epicenter of the outbreak in Wuhan in Hubei province, uh, Shanghai was still deeply affected. Every area of China was affected. So, you know, 1.4 billion people were on some sort of a lockdown, either at, you know, very, very severe or, um, you know, basically on house arrest uh, in your own quarters, in your own apartment or house. So just to be out in my park, the park that I come to all the time, pretty much every day, when the weather is good, we are here in the park. But to see people out here, you know, there's a guy over here reading a book. People are out with their kids. Couples are walking hand in hand. Uh, over here behind me, someone has actually pitched a tent and they're like camping out in the park. Not that they would be allowed to uh, spend the night or anything, but it's just so cool to see. So anyhow, I'm gonna continue my walk. I wanna show you guys some more, but as we go through the video, I want you to get a sense of what is possible uh, if we do the right things, uh, if you demand that your government does the right things. And again, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys know that I'm, I'm very, um, I guess, uh, I question the government. I question my government, uh, the United States government, quite a lot. And because I do that, I've had some comments where people are accusing me of just being a, you know, a Chinese sympathizer or, uh, you know, that I'm, I've renounced my citizenship or something crazy like that. And Nothing could be farther from the truth, but you know I'm a realist. I'm I'm I can't deny the evidence that worked. Now, did everything go perfectly? Absolutely not. Did China make some mistakes? Probably. I don't know. I wasn't there. Did they share data openly early on? Probably not. I guess my biggest complaint has been that the United States, no matter what, no matter how forthcoming China may or may not have been. Sorry, I've got a little girl on her scooter, so making a bunch of noise, which is awesome. I love the noise. I love people out and about at this point. Um, regardless of, of if China was completely transparent, their government or not, uh, we all knew it was happening. It was all over the news, right? People like me were shouting about it on Instagram, okay? People were sharing pictures and videos inside of hospitals, pulling, you know, near comatose people off of subway stations. Like we all saw this splashed all over the news. And my point that I've been trying to make is that, you know, the United States has spies, number one, we have diplomats, we have spyware embedded into all these countries, right? And we have satellites. So you can't tell me that 
the United States government, the President of the United States and his cabinet didn't know how severe this was. So that's why I criticize, guys. It's not because I'm just a rah-rah, go China, you know, communist sympathizer. I'm not. I am in this country because of my work. Uh, I think a lot of things are great here, to be quite honest, and I've been very positive about my experience here, and I've shared that quite a bit on Instagram and on my blog. Uh, but, you know, there's things that I don't agree with. I think issues with the freedom of speech here is draconian. It's terrible, right? I believe that we should be able to say and do what we want. I believe in free internet. I believe in spreading all information widely and then allowing the people to make up their mind. Now, on the flip side of that, we see what's going on in the United States, where we have that <laughs> in place and people are making the wrong choice. So. I don't know, maybe a freedom of speech doesn't work. I'm joking, I believe in it, 100%. Let's keep walking. The other thing right now is that the weather has turned toward spring and it's about 80 degrees today which is a positive sign. I don't know if the rumors are true about the virus going away when it gets warmer. I, I mean, I doubt it based on what I've read, but it's still nice to be outside in the sun. Springtime weather. It's a beautiful day, getting vitamin D, getting some sun on my skin after spending pretty much two months indoors under fluorescent lights, be it at home or at work. This is a godsend, I, I swear. Over the last couple months, I've had a lot of time to think about the concept of fear. I made a video a couple months back at the beginning of the year talking about how this year, 2020, would be the year that I conquered some of my lingering fears. <laughs> I had no idea how apt, how apropos that would, in, that would be. Uh, I think it's natural for us to all fear death, fear getting sick, fear being a burden on the healthcare system or on our family. And I've had to confront a lot of that over the last couple months, you know, for when this first broke out in China, uh, you know, we were freaking out. I was freaking out because, you know, I didn't want to get put into the healthcare system here, and not because it's not a good healthcare system, I don't mean that. I just mean, I may not be able to talk to my doctor. I may not be able to communicate specifically with nurses. Uh, you would be on government quarantine lockdown. I wouldn't be able to get messages in and out to my wife and my daughters, or if they got sick. Like what if my 10 year old got sick and was put in isolation by herself with nurses and doctors who Maybe, I don't know, I assume maybe they know some English, but who knows, a 10 year old, I mean, how frightened and terrified she would have been. So over the last couple months, you know, I, I had to deal with all of those feelings, not just the obvious of, you know, you might get sick and die, but some of the, the lesser fears of just getting sick and put into the system, even if you recover, a lot of unknowns, a lot of ambiguity and, uh, a lot of stress, to be honest. And I know that you are all feeling that right now in other countries. And even though I'm showing you guys some positive indicators, I'm not trying to minimize how hard it is. I know, I was there. We were all there here in China. Those of us who stayed here, we went through it all. We felt this creeping fear day after day as the cases started jumping, 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 jumping as we're seeing in these other countries now. So my heart goes out to you. Uh, I'm sending good vibes and I'm sending my empathy to everybody who's going through this in another country right now. But the reason I'm sharing this, the reason I'm walking around today is I'm also trying to give you guys a little bit of hope. I'm trying to give you what at least a partial recovery looks like at the very early stages. And I hope again that I'm not being overconfident. Uh, you know, I hope that I don't look back on this video later and, and shake my head. Um, but at least for right now, it's a little bit of peace of mind. It's a little bit of comfort. It's a little bit of good freaking news that I hope helps you. Want to 
unfortunate thing that I'm noticing as I walk is how many businesses have gone out of business. Uh, it's crazy to see how many like little coffee shops, restaurants, you know, mom and pop type stores are just are just shuttered. They couldn't survive no revenue for 30 days. All right, I'm at Shanghai Library, just checking out, see what's going on over here. Look at the line here behind me. It's a line of people waiting to get into the library, and they're all spaced out, even distances for safety. Pretty interesting. So as you can see back there at the library, the reason China, at least right now, is winning with the virus is because absolutely everywhere has a process. So at the library, you saw the line. Everybody was spaced out. There's a guy at the front of the line calling out names, sending people up, right? There's a person at the back of the line controlling traffic, controlling how many people get into the line. You see that everywhere here in China. You go into a mall, you got to show, um, it's like a little card. I'll put it up here on the screen somewhere so you guys can see my card. And basically what it is, is in the Alipay app. We all had to register. And what it does is, this is really creepy, this is Big Brother stuff, <laughs> but it takes your GPS tracking data from your phone. It can tell where you've been to make sure you've not been in a heavily affected country or area in China. And then it assigns you a score. So you're green, yellow, or red. And if you're green, then you can go into any building, you can do whatever you want. If you're yellow, there's certain restrictions. If you're red, that means your ass better be home, sitting on the couch with the door locked. So um, I've got to show that to get into my building at work. I've had to show it in, in a couple malls that I've had to go into. Um, every place, every public building you go to, you have to have your temperature checked. So processes work. In times like this, having a strong process, someone who has thought out every detail from point A to point Z, this is how you're gonna win. The problem right now is a lot of countries a lot of governments haven't thought through the processes or they're just now rolling them out and then they have a populace that's not listening to the processes, that doesn't want their freedoms, um, you know, encroached upon, I guess would probably be the right word. So anyways, guys, I'm just sharing what I see, what I've seen work since I've been here in China. Um, processes work, processes work. Wulumuchi Road. It's construction, that's a good sign. Economy's coming back. Uh, heading towards one of the, probably the biggest, one of the biggest uh, expat areas in the city. I'm gonna use this kind of as a barometer to see what's really going on. So, you know, it's one thing that the locals are out and about, that makes sense, this is their city. Uh, but I wanna see if any of the uh, expat places are, are coming back to life.
Well, guys, that's one of the busiest restaurants for breakfast in the city that I know of, and uh, it's packed. So, and it's a mix. It's it's both you know foreigners and locals. So that makes me feel so much better to see the city that I now call home for the last two and a half years uh, come back to life. guys so I spent most of the day out I'm gonna head back home now Frankie our dog is locked up in her little room she has like a little special closet that we made for her so I don't want to leave her there by herself all day so I'm gonna head home but you know hopefully you guys saw that most everything's getting back to almost normal you know again walking down Anfulu and Wulumuchi wasn't a hundred percent back foot traffic that uh, you know I'm used to for a Saturday but man it was about 80% uh, and it felt good it felt good I stopped for lunch had alimentari had a uh, cheese and meat board place was full I think there was one empty table uh, they were nice and spaced out though which was cool and yeah so I'm gonna head back home I'm gonna go through the park see what's going on there is the uh, Sun starts to head down. As I'm walking back home and walking through the park, and I see all these families out together, and it just puts everything into perspective for me. You know, we all get so busy and focused at work, in our careers, or in our consumerism, buying the next thing, working ourselves to death so we can buy that next designer handbag or, or the cool shoes that everybody's wearing or the cool freaking car that your neighbor has or the bigger house. And really at the end of the day, when a crisis like this happens, all we really want to do is make sure we have enough, enough comfort, enough security, so we can spend quality time with the people that we love. You know, I've been separated from my kids, my wife for six weeks at this point, maybe longer, I don't know, I'm not really watching the calendar, it's just too depressing, so. And, all I want to do is make sure that they're safe. And unfortunately, we kind of got that wrong looking back on it. I don't know, we thought we were doing the right thing by having them leave China. And we reacted too slow to get them back here. And now it looks like they're probably stuck in California. Flights are shut down. California is shut down. Yeah, anyways, good news is they're safe. Uh, they're in a great location. They're hunkered down, isolated. They've got food, got supplies, so they should be fine. Anyhow, so we're all dealing with this in, in one way or another. And today's video was really just trying to spread some positivity. You know, I get really frustrated, <clears throat> excuse me, I get really frustrated with the governments, especially my government, especially my president, our president, the US president, it's not my president, but whatever. Uh, I can get frustrated and I spread news because I want, I want to help. I want people to be informed. I want people to have the information to see how absolutely negligent the response has been from the United States. And sometimes I can go down the rabbit hole of negativity and just wanting, wanting people to be so informed that 
I forget that I'm also spreading negativity and, and possibly fear, and that's obviously not my intention. So I apologize if, uh, you know, if anybody thinks it's too much, but I'm trying to counteract some of that with my video today, which is to show the positive side of working together, to show the positive side of community, to show the positive side of a government called to action and doing the right things, at least eventually. You know, I'm sure they'll be second guessing. I'm 100% a, I'm a certain that the Chinese government didn't do everything right. No government will. But they got the big things right at the right time. And the simple fact that I've been able to enjoy a Saturday walking the town, getting to see my neighbors out, celebrating this beautiful spring day with their family and their loved ones is a testament to how fast and how effective we can fix things when we put our mind to it. So really all I'm trying to say is just get out there, spend time with the people you love. Don't be so focused on the rat race, on your career, on making a buck that you waste your life especially with times like this. I mean, I think what we've learned in the last two months is that all of our lives can be completely upended in a blink of the eye. So take this time to maybe look at your priorities. I know I have.